So in this video, we're gonna be talking about destroying your nice guy syndrome. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you one simple technique that will really help you amp this process up. Now with that said, let's get started. So what is a nice guy and why is it so bad? I mean, ultimately, nice guys just want everybody to be happy, right? You see, I'm a recovering nice guy. I was a really bad nice guy. In other words, I had a really bad nice guy syndrome. Um, and that next guy syndrome really made it so that I finished last in life. I was always struggling. I was always suffering. I was nice to everybody. I was trying to take care of everybody. I was trying to be a good guy. But for whatever reason, I didn't get the girl. I didn't make money. I didn't succeed. My life didn't move forward. And ultimately, I was miserable deep down inside. I felt like I had no power in the world. And that's why the nice guy syndrome doesn't work because you give all your power away. At its core, the nice guy is actually super needy. He's out there trying to get validation from the world. He's trying to get from the world because he's so insecure deep down inside. So let's take a deeper look at this right now. What drives the nice guy? Well, ultimately it's shame. It's shame created by emotional abandonment. You see, the nice guy, he has a toxic shame-based personality. And that shame was created at an early age, your parenting figure, your caretaker, mother, father, both, would shut off their heart and abandon you when they punished you. In other words, let's use my mom as an example. There were times I experienced abandonment. My mom would get mad at me. She would yell at me. She'd scream at me. And then she would shut off her heart and be really cold to me. And as a little child, that's life-threatening or it feels life-threatening. And then she wouldn't turn her heart back on for a day, two days, maybe sometimes three, depending on where she was at. And then suddenly she'd come back with this warm, fuzzy heart again. And this was her way of getting me to do what she said. You see, I was scared of losing my mother's love and validation. It might be that her behavior didn't change much, but you could feel that coldness come into the room. Sometimes her behavior could be really erratic and she could be up and down. You might see this in uh, an alcoholic parent. You might see this in a bipolar parent. You might see this in an overly strict parent that was controlling. But any way you look at it, it creates this sense of abandonment, which then makes you feel like you are a bad person. You're not good enough. And so you start to become extra nice to compensate for that. On top of that, you start to feel guilt. You feel guilt for everything you do. I'm doing something. If I am bad at my core, I must be doing something bad a lot. And then guilt engenders fear. So there's a lot of fear in a nice guy. And that fear leads to neediness. And that neediness is me trying to get, trying to get your validation, trying to get your approval, trying to feel safe around you. So I'm always looking at you with little subconscious indicators saying, was that good enough? Did you like that? And I also don't want to increase the tension. I don't want to step into tension with you and challenge you because you might invalidate me, which at its core will go all the way back and trigger that shame and that feeling of abandonment and make me feel like shit, make me feel horrible inside. And I just can't handle that pain. It's actually one of the worst pains we experience, the feeling of abandonment deep down inside. So we really don't want to feel that and we'll do anything to avoid it. So we walk around constantly looking for approval in the world to make sure that shame doesn't get triggered, to make sure we don't feel like ultimately a bad person. Now, so that you understand this at a deeper level, there are basically two types of nice guys. One has shame, they know it, and they're trying to hide it from the outside world. The other type, well, they have shame and they're even trying to deny it to themselves. But if you have the nice guy syndrome, if you have the nice guy traits, this will help you understand which one's going on because deep down inside, one of those two is going on. Now, me personally, I had a lot of shame and I think in the beginning, I really denied it. I told myself through positive thinking I was good enough and I was, I was a good guy and and I could do this, I could handle this, but ultimately that didn't change anything because at its core, I wasn't dealing with the real issue. I was in denial. And I had to learn to accept my shame and then learn to process my shame to get out to the other side. And we're gonna to come to that in a minute. So we're gonna to get to the part where I teach you the technique that I have been using largely to destroy my nice guy now. And it's really helped radically to destroy the remaining parts of my nice guy that I didn't get to in the past. Now, if you want to understand the nice guy syndrome better, I highly recommend you check out the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. 
And that book radically shifted my life when I first read it. When I first read it, it was so powerful that it triggered all my anger inside. And every nice guy, this is a, this is a hint as to where we're going, has deep embedded anger at, its, at their core because they've repressed so much emotion. And I remember I came home after reading that book and I started yelling at my girlfriend at the time. I lost control. I lost control of my anger. Then I immediately felt guilty, which then triggered my shame. And then I started to apologize to her and I showed her the book and, and I became this meek little needy boy needing her approval again so she didn't leave me and abandon me. Or at least that's the way I felt. All she did was laugh and she wasn't bothered by it at all. Matter of fact, I think she kind of liked the fact that I got angry, but at the time I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. Why would she like that? Why would she be, in a sense, turned on by the fact that I actually stood up for myself or had balls for once? And I really had to dive deep and start redeveloping myself from there. With that said, nice guys avoid having their own wants, needs, and desires unless they're first validated by the person for having them. If that person says it's okay and validates them, then it's okay to have a want, need, or desire. But in general, I don't want to put one out there because you might invalidate me, which then again will trigger that abandonment and make me feel shame. And so we tend to hide all our wants, needs, and desires. This is why nice guys are always asking women, well, where do you want to go to dinner? You tell me. You have all the want, you have all the desire, and I'll fulfill it. And if I fulfill it, we'll both be happy, right? But in reality, it doesn't work. It's you pleading to her to tell you what to give her so, she, so you feel safe and you think that this will get you what you want in life. But in actuality, what she gets is a boring guy that she can wrap around her finger that will do anything she wants because he's afraid of tension. He's afraid to step into that tension and tell her what he likes, what he wants. She's not dating a man. She's dating a nice guy, or in this case, a nice boy, maybe we could say. Okay, so let's talk about what we can do today to start solving this problem, to turn this around. How do you change this area of your life? Well, the reason I'm standing here right now is because the nice guy typically operates down here. He operates in apathy, grief, and fear. Grief is where the guilt is. Fear is what's engendered by the guilt. Shame is down in here. A lot of times we go into apathy and we shut off the shame. So if you understand this scale, it's going from heaviest to light. The heaviest energy is here and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter all the way up to peace where we feel free and we feel fulfilled and we feel full of life and we feel happy and everything's flowing. In reality, the happiest people operate up in courage, acceptance, love, and peace. Nice guys operate down here. And as soon as they come up into grief, they are in grief, they're in shame, they're in guilt, they're ashamed of themselves, they're guilty, they're always engendering fear because of their guilt. And as soon as they have a want, need, or desire, they lust and they have a craving, they start to go into a sense of shame again. As soon as somebody looks at them with the littlest amount of disapproval, looks at them like, what do you want? Why do you want that? Uh, that's just stupid. Anything like that or disapproves of them, they go immediately back into guilt and shame and they crash back down. So they're in a constant cycle, never getting above here. What they really want to do is learn to hop up to courage, acceptance, love, and peace. And they want to skip all these middle emotions, lust, anger, and pride, the wanting emotions. Think of these as the wanting emotions, the very thing the nice guy is terrified of. So ultimately, for the nice guy to go free, he has got to learn to love these emotions, to not make them right or wrong, good or bad. And when he gets into relationship with these emotions, he can start working his way up to here and even leave these behind. Because this is the power that sets him free so he can live up here through the releasing of attachments and aversions. This sense that I have to have this thing or I need to push it out of my life. So when we take a deeper look at this, the real pivotal factor is anger. When you get good at anger, because every nice guy is repressing his anger, hence he is a nice guy. He doesn't want to set a boundary. He doesn't want to say no. He doesn't want to push somebody back. He doesn't want to, to break up with somebody because the shame he'll ensue when he does that, when he experiences that, sucks so bad, it will uh, rip him up inside. It will hurt horribly. So what he does instead is he constantly tries to figure out what you need to, to not experience this anger or this pride. But once he gets good at anger and pride, they stop being anger and pride. They start being courage. Once he's no longer reactive to anger and pride, they become courage. 
We see anger is lose-lose. Pride is win-lose. Encourage is win-win. So let's go a little deeper. As I have been practicing and having my clients practice, get, practicing getting really good at anger, releasing all the attachment, all the aversion, really it's the aversion, the aversion to anger. I don't want to feel angry. Stop making it wrong and learn to make it proactive, not reactive. I want to say that again. Learn to make it proactive, not reactive. They're going to get win after win after win. So whenever I feel any apathy, grief, fear, shame or guilt or anything that's a lower emotion like that, I realize that that is comprised of anger, that there's some anger that's repressed in there. There's anger that's holding that emotion down. Like first I felt anger because it's a higher vibration. And when I couldn't do anything about my anger, I went into fear. And when I couldn't do anything about my fear, I went into guilt and I went down the scale till eventually I was apathetic and I was numbed out. That's a perfect example. So if I feel guilt, I'll say, okay, guilt has anger in it. It's repressed anger. Can I welcome the anger inside the guilt? Can I just sit and be with the anger? Can I release the attachment and the aversion to the guilt and let the anger come out? Can I be as angry as I am proactively? Can I welcome the proactive, powerful nature of anger? Fuck it, I'm gonna feel this fully. I'm gonna be with this fully, this guilt. Then the guilt starts to change. It starts to transmute into more anger and more anger. And then as I relax into the anger and use it proactively, I start to feel pride or courage. I go up higher and higher. And I can do this in a simple meditation. I can do this just welcoming my emotions. Maybe I go out and say hi to five people and I feel the guilt of bothering these people. Then I go through that guilt. I go through that fear. I welcome the fear. I say this anger, this fear is lower than anger, so it's got to have some anger in it. Repressed anger. Can I welcome that fear? Can I be with that fear? Can I welcome the anger inside the fear? Can I let go of the fear and let the anger take over? And you might suddenly feel anger at the people you were afraid of. Like, I'm pissed at you. It's a reaction formation. And then I release on that. And I relax and I get comfortable with the anger. I stop making it right or wrong, good or bad. Then eventually it starts to rise up to pride and courage. Maybe I'm angry at myself. Maybe it starts out as fear. I feel that fear at myself. And then I relax into that fear. I go deeper into it. And then I release the aversion to the fear and I start to feel it fully. And then I say, bring up more of that anger. Can I welcome more proactive anger that's inside the fear? And eventually the anger, almost like scales, dissolves the fear. And I notice what the anger is angry at. Is it anger at somebody else? Is it angry at a situation? Is it angry at myself? Maybe I'm angry at the people who are watching me talk to the girl I was flirting with. And I feel like they were judging me. And I feel that anger and I release the right and wrong of it, the good and the bad of it. And then I start to laugh and I go up to courage and I go up to peace ultimately. That's the process. Get comfortable with your anger that's buried in every one of these emotions. At its core, it's gonna be shame. And so when you experience the shame, remember again, shame is down here. So shame is gonna have some repressed anger in it. Welcome the anger that's in the shame. Welcome the shame first, feel the shame fully. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna be scary. You're gonna feel like, you're a bad person, there's something wrong with you, and then start letting those scales balance. Let the anger come out and let the fear like dissipate, go away. And then that anger will start to take over. And maybe you'll get really angry at yourself because you hate yourself, or really angry at your mom for making you feel ashamed. And just be with that for a moment. And then start to let that go. Say, can I welcome that anger? Can I let go of the right and wrong of it, the good and the bad of it? Can I just let let it dissolve and then pretty soon it'll start to lighten that anger will turn into pride i'm winning i'm doing this i'm feeling more powerful this is all about reclaiming power these three energies right here hear that again these three energies are about reclaiming power and then eventually courage ensues and then you can start to have love for your mom again you can start to appreciate her. that's the goal even if she did make you feel ashamed as a child she did the best she could but you can only do that through revealing, through realization, realization of that love, not forcing of it. And then as that transmutation happens and you rise up the scale, you start to feel more free, more powerful, more alive again. And that's the process. This is the process of getting in touch with these three energies, particularly anger, which is the pivotal point for getting up here and burning off this. And if you take a, 
the regular practice after you go out you flirt you talk to somebody and you feel that guilt that shame you feel that fear and you start using those emotions to find the you start welcoming those emotions and finding the anger inside and letting it up releasing the right and wrong of it experiencing the proactive nature of it turning it into courage you are going to get happier and happier a little bit each day and in like 30 days 60 days 90 days you're going to see a radical difference in your life try this right now just sit down with it be with it and process with it you'll notice it can make a huge huge difference and if you want to learn more about the skills that we're talking about here definitely check out the fearless events page uh, we have the fearlessman.com slash events. We got the revealing process. We've got the experience workshop where we put you right in front of models to experience the rise of these emotions, looking right in their eyes, processing with them in the very, in that moment, filming you on video, looking at your sub communication, and then showing you how to process watching yourself on video, feeling your own guilt and shame for who's on that screen, getting it out of your nervous system, radically shifting you at your core, deep down inside. If you're gonna say, how are you? Connect here first, and I want you to feel the connection with the eyes, connect. When you've got that connection, you feel a little bit of tension, a little bit of vulnerability, then it's, hi, how are you? Hi. Or, I love your hair. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Busting the nice guy up and bringing out your inner bad boy. So if you're ready for a change like that, definitely check out thefearlessman.com slash events. Now, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you got a lot of value out of it. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and hit that bell notification and make sure to comment. And with that said, uh, if you want another video to watch that could really help you understand this better, check out the video, How Selfishness Attracts. It'll teach you more about why the nice guy finishes last and how to break up the nice guy to become the best version of yourself. Because it's not really about being nice or not nice. You can be nice. You just gotta be nice by choice and not out of have to, not out of need to, to get validation. And once you understand that, your life will radically shift. Now, with that said, remember, only the confident really live, and I'll see you in the next video. I wanna remind you to check out my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. We'll have a link somewhere in this video. Uh, this book is really a culmination of many years of research, and it's about the embodiment of attraction, the embodiment of being a seductive man, a man that draws women in, through his presence, through understanding what it is to feel like a sexy bastard, understanding what it is to access his turn on, his groundedness, his container, his tension skills, how these processes are developed in the, in the body and how they're expressed through the body and how when they become part of your beingness, you just become a naturally attractive man. So make sure to check out the book by hitting the link in this video now.